Mike Starr was the bassist and one of the founding members of Seattle grunge band Alice in Chains. Starr started out playing in numerous late 80s glam bands before meeting Jerry Cantrell and Sean Kinney. Eventually, the trio, who did not have a lead singer, coaxed a young Lane Staley into joining their band and they officially took up the name Alice in Chains. The band rose to fame during the shift between glam metal and grunge. The band's debut album, Facelift, was a breath of fresh air along with other bands like Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, and Nirvana. Songs like We Die Young and Man in the Box became extremely popular and the band was thrust into the spotlight, quickly becoming a household name. Starr was known for his bass skills and good looks, as well as being a heavy partier, especially while on tour. Alice in Chains toured heavily between 1991 and 1992, before taking a break to record their second and most popular album, titled Dirt. This album features songs like Wood, Rooster, and Down in the Hole. In January 1993, whilst back on tour with Alice in Chains in Brazil, Starr, who at this point was dealing with an addiction to heroin, shot up with Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love, before heading back to the dressing room and shooting up with bandmate and close friend Lane Staley. Right after shooting up, Starr got up and instantly collapsed, leading to a hysterical Staley reviving him with CPR in the dressing room shower after he supposedly died for 11 minutes. He had saved my life in South America one time. We were, uh, we were touring with uh, Nirvana and the Chili Peppers and we were playing a big show, a big festival down in South America. And I, Kurt had taken me into the room, um, the bathroom, him, him and Courtney, and we shot up all night. And uh, then Lane didn't know that. And I went to Lane's room and uh, we shot up and I, I OD'd. And, oh, you, you shot up on top of what you had done with Courtney and, and, uh, and Kurt. And Kurt. Uh, yeah, and so Lane didn't know that. And so he, uh, I wake up and I'm all wet. And I'm um, laying on over the uh, toilet, and um, I'm, you know, I'm in a different room, and I'm all wet, and he had added me in the shower and everything, and I didn't, you know, I was obviously blacked out during that whole time. You're not breathing or something during that? I was flatlined, uh, for, and he said, you, and he's crying, punching me in the face, and he's, I'm oh, like, what, what's wrong? What did I do? He's like, you were dead for 11 minutes, Mike. Between Starr failing to show up for practice, as well as pressuring the other band members for more publishing rights, scalping tickets, his drug problem, and his overall attitude, Cantrell and Kinney made the decision to fire Starr as the band's bassist, right at the height of their success. Right after Starr was fired, Cantrell called Ozzy Osbourne's bassist, Mike Inez, and he was immediately brought into the band, with Jerry Cantrell quoted saying, quote, we made one phone call. We called Mike. If we were going to get another bass player, we were going to have to get another guy with the same name, smoke the same cigarettes, plays the same bass, looks the same, end quote. One, however, who was not happy about the replacement was Lane Staley, who was very close friends with Starr and was pretty upset with the decision. The band told the press that Starr wanted to leave on his own accord and no longer wanted the tour. Starr played his last show with Alice in Chains on January 22, 1993, in which Starr admitted he shot up before the show. Starr was shaking and was struggling to get through the last few songs of the set list, but pushed forward. The original four of Alice in Chains left the stage, never to play again. Mike joined another lesser-known band, Sun Red Sun. However, it was short-lived as Ray Gillen, a member of the band, died in 1993, leading to Mike retiring from music. Mike's drug use turned into a desperate addiction, leading him to being arrested in Houston's International Airport in April 1994 after stealing a suitcase from the baggage claim area. Starr fought an addiction for the rest of the 1990s and fell out of the spotlight just as fast as he was in it. Lane Staley's drug addiction had caused Alice in Chains to disband, and Lane became a recluse. After Starr was booted out of the band, Staley and Starr remained close friends, to the point that Mike was one of the only people Lane let in his life in his final years. On April 4, 2002, on Mike's 36th birthday, he went to Lane's condo to visit him, to which Lane wasn't in a good mood and appeared on the verge of death, telling Mike, quote, I'm sick. Mike offered to call 911 to help Lane, but he refused, telling Mike he'd never speak to him again if he did. Mike, who at this point was addicted to benzodiazepines, pissed off Staley, with Lane telling Mike he was too high and saying, quote, you're an idiot on these pills, end quote. Mike told Lane he was leaving after this, to which Lane shouted, quote, don't leave like this. 
Mike walked to his mother's house where he blacked out in the basement for two weeks and Lane Staley died the next day. I was with Lane the day, uh, it was my birthday, the day, he died the day after my birthday. And I was with him all that day on my birthday, trying to keep him alive. And uh, I, I even asked him if I could call 911, you know, and he said if, if I did, he would never talk to me again. And of course, I didn't know he was going to die or I would have called 911 anyways. Of course, of course, of course. I would much rather have had him alive and him not talking to me than... Yeah. To have lost such a great human being, so and a dear friend, a dear friend, just a great human, a great person. What a great person he was. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I will say to the. There is speculation that Mike was with Lane when he died and left him there, taking his cash and Lane's stash of drugs with him. However, I'm not saying this is true. This is all speculation and is just a theory. Starr was convicted of felony drug possession in 2003, and a bench warrant was issued for his arrest on August 25, 2003, for failing to show up for sentencing. Later that year, Mike, along with his own father, John Starr, were arrested for allegedly doing drugs on a flight from Los Angeles to Salt Lake City. The father and son were caught with syringes and balloons filled with heroin in their luggage. Starr was also arrested again in April of 2005. Starr was once again arrested in 2009 for a felony narcotics charge. He was held with a $100,000 bail. In 2010, Starr was featured on a VH1 show called Celebrity Rehab, where he was helped by Dr. Drew and was even visited by Lane Staley's mom, Nancy McCallum. Starr was staying at the Pasadena Recovery Center, where he stayed sober for six months and seven days. Also during his stint, Mike returned to music, recording a cover of Sonic Youth's Cool Thing with singer Leanna. Starr was also in the process of starting a new band, which was going to open for Days of the New. I want to kill the pain inside me, because the medicine doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm so sick of life. I hate life, man. I hate life. You know what? Yes. You don't want to die? I don't really care. Really? That's how bad it is. I don't give a shit. I'd like to die right now, as a matter of fact. Yeah. I wish, uh, I wish I would have called 911 that day. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have known he was dying. I wish I would have called 911. He told me that if I did, he would never talk to me again, but there's no excuses that I should have done that anyways. And, uh, I wish I wouldn't have been high on benzodiazepam. I wouldn't have just walked out the door. Did you see Lane die? No, I didn't see Lane die. I went over to his house, and um, he just said, uh, I'm sick, you know? I'm sick, and um, and I said I'd come back. I said I'd come back. I went home and I blacked out on benzodiazepam. I came with that. I just blacked out for two the whole two weeks. Starr was staying with a friend in Salt Lake City, and on March 8, 2011, he was found unresponsive in his bed. 911 was called, and Mike Starr was pronounced dead at the scene. Allison Chains asked for privacy after Starr's death, although he had not been close with the band or a member in nearly 20 years. Starr was reportedly mixing methadone with anti-anxiety meds before his death. The only public information is that he died of a prescription medication overdose. About 1.42 this afternoon, we received a call of a possible death at the address of 1986 South Richard Street in Salt Lake City. When officers arrived at this location, they discovered that Michael Starr was deceased in this residence. The medical examiner's office responded to this location, took possession or custody of the body, and transported that to their facility, and we are awaiting cause and manner of death that will be provided to us. Mike Starr will be remembered for being one of the founding fathers of one of the biggest bands to come out of Seattle. 
Alice and Chains, who are still touring, like to perform Nutshell in memory of Lane and Mike. Sean Kinney also has the initials LS and MS on his drum kit to honor the two fallen members. <laughs> 